let's get on with this blog, which is written by the OLX team on how they have built a highly scalable media server, which actually runs 650 million daily requests and on the peak time, 15,000 image fetch requests per second and which actually supports real-time image processing like adding a watermark onto the image and the resizing of uh, the image like uh, changing the original image to 720-480 resolution and it also supports documents and audio files. Now let's see the reason why they've actually built their own server. The reason is uh, the demerger between this OLX India and OLX Group. They've actually uh, separated apart and uh, they were initially using the server of OLX Group. Uh, now they have to kind of build their own because of um, I think this licensing fee, there was a huge uh, cost for them. So they actually uh, thought of building their own server. Initially, they have in this blog, they have uh, written the requirements that they're looking for. Uh, it should be handling, uploading a fetch of images, documents and media file. And it should support different resolutions, which will be on real time. We'll be seeing what does it mean, how they are doing it. Then they also want to support this OLX logo on runtime, which is Dynamic. We'll be also seeing how they are doing this. And a few more things they're supporting like formats and everything else. Now let's directly move to the technical part. Now, this is their core media service on the high level. What they have done, simply the load balancer as uh, usual, uh, will have a media server and it is deployed on the Kubernetes. All the image uploads actually goes into S3 and the metadata regarding these images actually are saved into MySQL. And on the Kubernetes, they also have auto scaling set up. So if you have a lot of loads coming in, they can actually add more servers in Kubernetes language, add more pods or remove more pods. We'll go into this in a little bit more detail in just a minute. Just first understand why they have used S3. The reason is S3 is highly scalable. That means if we have a lot of load going into S3, it is easily able to scale. And it's highly reliable. That means if we, let's say today, uploaded an image into S3, and if we want to get the image back tomorrow, uh, it's highly probable that we will be able to get the image from the S3. Now let's go into a little bit more detail about this one. So we'll be having a client uh, in the front. We'll have a load balancer in which we'll have actually the service media service here let's group them together and they will be uploading it into the s3 and we'll have a database which is sqs in our case where they will be storing the uh, metadata now let's say a user is uploading a file from some kind of a ui in the back end we will be using some kind of a library and actually uh, node.js we have something called a mutex where we have to give it a path. We're going to store it into over server first, let's say slash temp. Then we will be giving it a kind of a name. Then we'll actually create a buffer from this and upload it into the S3. Uh, let me actually show this here. Upload it into the S3. Now, this might be a little slow because we are actually doing this probably in the hard disk and then uploading into the S3. Other option Mutex actually gives us where we can tell it if we want to store um, the image first into the hard disk uh, or we can actually store into the memory. Right. Now, there we can actually set an option to the memory, but we have to be careful because uh, we have a limited memory. So in that case, um, we don't want to uh, kind of go over the memory. And because of that, it can be much faster than actually simply using a hard disk. Now, let's understand what data that we'll be storing into SQL. We talked about we'll be storing something like a metadata. Now, let's say we have a user. Now, it has uploaded the image into the S3. It is already here. It wants it back. So normally it will already have an UI where it will click on the particular image and at the end it will send an ID back to the server. Now to understand, because at the end of the day, we have to get it from this S3, but we do not know the path of the image. So what we have to do, we have to somewhere store that. In here we have a path, let's say it is in some kind of an image folder slash the name of the image, right? So we have to store this information with this ID. So we'll have in SQL uh, kind of a row where which will have an ID and we'll have the path of that image, right? And we'll be going to this one. And then it will return us the image. There'll be some processing going on here, and then it will give that image back to the user. Now, when we talk about this processing, OLX is doing it a little differently than if we talk about YouTube, right? So let's maybe a little bit understand first how normally YouTube does it. Then we can actually understand what uh, OLX is doing. So normally, because in YouTube, we'll have different type of resolutions. Let's say we have 720, uh, we have 1080, we have 420, and a lot of different uh, different resolutions. Now, let's assume uh, YouTube is also using the S3. Honestly, what we can do is if, let's say, we upload an image, we can actually can connect it to a queue. Let's say right now it will be SQS. And on the front, we can actually have a Lambda. Right? So what YouTube will be doing is something like this. When anything is uploading to the S3, uh, it is connected to SQS. Uh, so in this WebR message, which will get information, which will have a path 
to this image and the lambda they will be processing the image and converting the original image into let's say 480 uh, 720 and 180 1080 and then saving it again into the s3 but they also have to change the data in this sqs because they have to now store it because with this id they will there will be an original image so this uh, talking about this row will have the original image path original path uh, then we'll also have the path of this 720p uh, image and then we'll have this 1080 and others right now let's understand how olx will be doing it so we have the client again it is actually asking for some kind of an image uh, with an id so it will first go into the sqs with the id and get actually the url it will go into the s3 and get the url back now olx actually is not storing all the resolutions here they are only storing the original file we'll understand why they're doing this but let's understand first what they're doing they're actually processing it in the real time there are many libraries uh, they're actually using the rust because processing an image will be a cpu intensive task they are using actually a rust language for doing that there is a library in rust we can actually do it in other languages i'm sure there, there will be uh, image processing libraries that we can do so what they are doing they're doing two things one one they're actually adding a logo onto the image so normally we'll get uh let's like say this image from the sd they're adding a logo onto that particular image on the real time second they are doing is let's say user wants a 720p image right let's say the original is 2k or something they will convert this image into 720 and then return it to the user so that's what they are doing two things logo and the resolution now as you remember this was actually their initial feature that they wanted is real time logo now the reason for why they are doing this on the real time is because let's say tomorrow that also they are saying in the post if they change this logo right if they change this logo now if they've already uh, pre-processed it and saved it into the s3 they have to reprocess it for all of them so let's say there are millions of images uh, let's say 10 million images in s3 if they change let's say a logo so they have to reprocess every single this 10 million of images and then save into the s3 which is going to be a huge cost for them and this second why they are generating this resolution on the real time let me first kind of delete this thing it's too much so they're saying let's say they have 10 million images now they have to store first these 10 million original images now if they have let's say five different resolutions so they have to store 50 million images total it will be 60 million images so it will be like six times the cost initially they have to store 10 million now they have to store 60 million images so they have decided instead of doing this they'll be doing the thing in the real time now you might have a question are they generating this resolution on the real time for every single user let's say i am a user i actually want an image um, will they be doing it for me and let's say there's some other user every time a user asks for an image uh, actually no so what they're actually using is some kind of a cache in this case they're using cdn so let me uh, remove this here now let's see so let's say we have a client is asked uh, we have a server it asks for an image right it asks for some with an id some kind of an image now what they do initially when they actually uh, process it and send it back to the user they also store it in a cdn now let's say there is this uh, new user that actually wants the same image so it will actually get it from this cdn instead of going through the server then the s3 and then processing it and sending it back now the benefit of this cdn first is simple that the user that we have here it will get the image much faster because now we don't have to process it again and again now the second thing is we don't have to now process in the server reprocess reprocess the image every time a user requests for it so if let's say the ttl for uh, the cdn is three days we have to process one image every three days only so i hope you understand the benefits of using cdn now there is actually an interesting thing here it is not mentioned in their post but i would still like to address it let's say we have five different resolutions and in those only two are something that is frequently used let's say uh, 360 is not being used too frequently because everybody has a good internet now um, like everybody is using uh, a much better resolution so we'll never if it's never being used we'll never have for a particular image create this 360 resolution but if we have gone with the process of re uh, like pre-calculating it we have to uh, calculate all the resolutions for every single image right so this could be again one of interesting point that you can actually put in mind that we never may have to convert an image into 360 because it's never being called it's never being used by any uh, user now let's go back to the post uh, i think they mentioned this dynamic uh, image processing that we already talked about that 
every the logo editing uh, the resolution will be done dynamically uh, and they've also mentioned why they are not using pre-processing as we have already discussed it will actually add up their s3 storage cost because initially right now they are actually storing one original image otherwise they have to also store uh, n other images which will be uh, the resolution let's say they are storing five different resolutions now they have to store original plus that five resolutions uh, here they have example that is fine that we already discussed let's now understand this point what they're saying is if they have to support a new resolution let's say they already are supporting 320 uh, 360 uh, 480 now they want to support 720 they have to recalculate all the media files if they were actually doing the pre-calculation now they are doing uh, on real time they don't have to do this uh, still i'm a little bit confused because let's say for a particular image uh, you have already uh, like processed for 360 and 480 for the same image why we have to process it again or are they saying that they have to uh, let's say they have 10 million images and for all the 10 million images they have to process it for that 720 new resolution only and that is fine like we have to for that 10 million images uh, we have to run some kind of a job that will be running in background uh, that will be actually generating from the original image a new 720 um, resolution file for all the different images now actually if we have a new resolution we can actually try to distribute the load uh, let me actually go in here and let me explain it let me remove this all thing first so let's say we already have uh, let me actually go to the pen first uh, pen over here ah. so let, let's say we already are supporting 360 we're already are supporting 480 now we have to support 720 so let's say we have this image in somewhere in the S3. This is S3. We'll be getting it from there. We'll be having some kind of a job running. And what we have to do is convert it. Like this is not what they're doing. I'm just saying if we'll be doing it, we have to pre-compute it. Uh, if we have to do the pre-computation, how will we be doing it? So let's say we have this image, right? And uh, we have some kind of a queue here. It will be going to that. There will be some kind of a lambda that actually will be processing it. This image, uh, this will be an original image. Then saving the 720p in, in the S3 again, right? Now, what they are saying, what they are more curious about, let's say there are 10 million images, we have to do this for all of them. In that case, what I feel we could do, because uh, if we have a new feature, new resolution coming in, we don't have to make it live, uh, let's say today. Let's say we decided today we want to uh, have a new resolution. We can do what? We can actually distribute the load. Let's say uh, we want, we'll have seven days to do it. Uh, we'll distribute the load. Let's say we have 10 million images. Uh, we'll do this in seven different days. And even in that, we'll have 24 hours in a day. What we'll do, we'll distribute. It'll be uh, 10 million divided by seven into 24, whatever this value will be, that many will be doing every single hour. So it'll be like 500 images every hour, which is kind of doable, I believe. So what we can do is we can have this job that will be taking uh, like 500 images uh, from this 10 million images every single hour. And for every week, we'll be processing it. And after one week, we can actually make this resolution live. So this way we'll be able to do this in let's say one week and we'll be distributing the load and there'll not be much um, like load on our servers. Now let's move back. Uh, now they're doing it in a different approach. They're doing it real time. They're actually processing the image on the real time and sending that back to the user. So if he wants 720, uh, they will have an original image, process that and send it back to the user. Right, uh, it will help them in the watermarking thing in this one also. Now, if we go down, they're actually mentioning the CDN here that we already discussed. They're doing it for caching and they're actually distributing it uh, globally uh, in different data centers. The reason is simple that let's say this is for this CDN is for someone user in India and this is someone that is in US or some other country. Uh, because uh, let's say a uh, user in India that can connect to a CDN in India because it's much closer to it instead of going over the sea and to connect in some other CDN. Uh, same for here, right? So it will be much faster than to access instead of going uh, to some other CDN. So I hope you understand uh, how they have actually built their own scalable media server. I've actually added uh, extra than what is in the post so that you will be able to understand things clearly and more better. So that's it. I hope you liked the video. Okay, bye.